the human body. It works, it beats, it changes, it sneezes, it wheezes, it creaks, it's alive, and it's made up of 37.2 trillion individual cells, the basic building blocks of life. The most amazing thing about the human body, and most animals and plants for that matter, is that so many individual and different cells, from nerve cells to muscle cells, arise from just one simple cell, the fertilized egg, or zygote. But how does this happen? How does one cell turn into so many cells, each with their own specific function, shape, and position? These questions have puzzled scientists for decades, but recent advances in cell biology have revealed to us many of the answers. The two main processes by which cells distinguish themselves from one another are cell differentiation, or specialization in structure and function, and morphogenesis, or specialization in three-dimensional position in relation to other cells. When a cell differentiates, its genetic code does not actually change. Instead, what really changes is which genes are expressed and which are not, thus producing a set of unique proteins for a particular cell type. Therefore, at the forefront of cell differentiation and morphogenesis is a process called gene expression regulation. Genes, which are short segments of DNA, are the basic units of inheritance that often code for the production of proteins or small segments of RNA, which we will discuss in a minute. As you can imagine, a cell can't afford to express every single one of its genes all the time. Not only would that be a horrendous waste of energy, it could also lead to diseases such as cancer. That's why it's important for each cell to regulate which genes are expressed when, which is the very basis of how cells come to look and function differently. Now, before we understand how gene expression regulation drives cell differentiation, we must first understand the basics of gene expression regulation. There are many ways in which a cell controls which of its genes are expressed, but we will only cover the major ones here. One of the first ways a gene's expression can be regulated is at transcription, which is the process of copying a gene into a strand of messenger RNA, which can then be translated into a protein. At the level of transcription, the cell has many opportunities to regulate if a gene will be transcribed and how fast it will be transcribed. RNA polymerase II, which is the protein that actually reads the DNA and creates the RNA, doesn't work alone. In order for the transcription of any gene to occur, proteins called general transcription factors must interact with the RNA polymerase and regions on the DNA called control elements. However, these proteins alone usually transcribe at a very slow rate. In order to speed things up, proteins specific to each gene, called specific transcription factors, fittingly, are needed. Specific transcription factors bind to control elements that are in groups called enhancers. Enhancers are usually actually pretty far away from the gene, sometimes thousands of nucleotides away. Thus, other proteins called DNA bending proteins and mediator proteins are necessary to bring the enhancers close to the gene being transcribed, which allows it to interact with other proteins and position the complex for transcription. By the way, nucleotides are the individual base units of DNA and RNA that are repeated in DNA and RNA structure. Now, you may think that there must be a pretty sizable amount of different specific transcription factors since there are so many different genes. But in fact, scientists have shown that there aren't that many different kinds. Thus, it is the combination of different transcription factors, not the individual factors themselves, that allows each gene to be regulated. So, by regulating which specific transcription factors it contains, a cell can regulate the transcription of specific genes. And now let's take a field trip to the cell lab. Hey everybody, welcome to the cell lab. As you can see here, we're sitting inside the frame of a giant cell. With the nucleus right here, and a little part in front of you right here that we're just going to be focusing on today. And that's because I'm just going to try and solidify the ideas I talked to you concerning the regulation of gene expression. Okay, so if we could just zoom in on this area right here. Now on this segment of the DNA here, which is called a gene, 
we can see that we have a little cart moving back and forth. This cart represents the RNA polymerase, which creates an RNA transcript from the DNA of the gene. This RNA transcript is later translated into a protein. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the RNA polymerase does not work alone. It needs what are called general transcription factors, which I will now add to the RNA polymerase. These general transcription factors are necessary for the transcription of all genes. But what we're concerned about in this video is the regulation of gene expression. So, for specific genes, molecules called specific transcription factors are needed. Specific transcription factors bind to areas of the DNA called control elements, which are in groups called enhancers. Enhancers are usually pretty far away from the gene of interest. Now, while in this model, it may seem that they're pretty close because you know, the spatial reasoning here, if you look at the actual DNA, they're nucleotides away from the gene of interest. So if the enhancers are usually pretty far away from the gene, then how do they get close enough in order to help with transcription? Well, that's where DNA bending proteins and mediator proteins come in. As you can imagine, a DNA bending protein bends the DNA. It binds to areas on the DNA and bends the DNA in order to bring the specific transcription factors closer to the transcription complex. But that's not all. You also need mediator proteins in order to actually help connect the specific transcription factors to the transcription complex. So now, with the RNA polymerase, the general transcription factors, the mediator proteins, the specific transcription factors, and the DNA bending protein, the gene is ready to be transcribed. Now, while we have this giant model of the cell here, I thought we should have at least a little bit of fun. Which is why I'm going to show you a demonstration of the importance of non-coding RNAs, which are short segments of RNA that are very important in the regulation of certain genes. In this example, we have a messenger RNA here, and what's called a micro RNA here. Now let's see what happens when the micro RNA runs into the complementary messenger RNA. I'm going to pull the strings from back here behind the camera. Three, two, one. Now, as you can see, the messenger RNA was completely destroyed. Well, that's it for the cell lab. Now that we've gone over all the jargon, let's apply these ideas to how cells become different. I already mentioned how a cell can regulate which genes are expressed by having certain transcription factors within it. But that's just a backwards explanation, because then you could ask, well, how does a cell have different transcription factors in the first place? Turns out that the answer goes all the way back to when the very first cell, the fertilized egg, develops. Before an egg cell is fertilized, the mother's genes produce certain molecules, called cytoplasmic determinants which are unevenly distributed throughout the egg cell. Now, what could those molecules be? You guessed it, they're often transcription factors. The reason they are unevenly distributed is so that when the first cell divides into two cells, and then four, and then so on, each cell receives a different portion of the original egg cell, and thus a different concentration of different molecules. From here on out, this process is continued until the different cells of the body are produced. For because these early cells have different transcription factors, they will express different genes and then produce different molecules, and the cycle continues. For different transcription factors will be produced, and this information will be passed down, and the process will continue until finally completely different cells are produced that have the same genetic information but simply express different parts of this information. And now, a word from our sponsors. Introducing Squeeze Myrna, microRNA in squeeze form. Do you have unruly, misbehaving genes? Well, put some Squeeze Myrna on any cell and regulate those genes.